Hey guys, Paul Inventor 3 here. Um, I have a question for the one out there. Uh, let's see, first of all, thank you guys for, uh, hey, we think we're finally in high definition now. I think. <laughs> I think. I'm using my cell phone, so this is the first time I'm going to try this. Hopefully there's enough memory and all that good stuff. Um, thank you guys so much for being with me, man, for all you guys. So many of you guys out there been with me for many years. Uh, the one, I like your suggestions here, these bifiler coils. Uh, this is on video part uh, 10 and video part 11, uh, saying about, let's see, you need to... I'm not going to read the whole thing. You need to add a ferret rod or the bifiler in between your antenna and the tape circuit. Then your ground goes to your normal coil. No copper or ferrite inside. Ferrite. Uh, you can multiply the effects. Uh, voltage will skyrocket. And he's pretty much saying the same thing over there. You use multiple circuits, you know. Uh, multiple grounds so uh, one thing I was wondering is which way are you winding it's hard for me to tell on your videos and I thought my video quality was bad <laughs> I'm just messing with you man uh, we're a good group here no one's attacking anybody let's see um, I was wondering how you wound your your bifiler coils like this or like this it's hard to tell on your video. I think they're like that. Uh, anyhow, you're saying, you know, put the coil in between the antenna and the circuit, and then connect your ground goes to your normal coil. So that would mean I would have to have one end of my coil connected to the ground itself like that. Now, I don't know if you understand exactly how I have my thing wired right now. Because um, I was thinking, well, that means you would have to put, you're saying to put your bifiler in between the antenna and the circuit. It would be either there or there. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. My coil right now, my large coil is in series between the antenna and my circuit. Uh, maybe you thought my coil was grounded. It's the coil is not physically grounded. See, my coil runs in between my antenna and the circuit, and then I have my circuit going to the ground rod that goes through that coil. So actually what you're suggesting is almost exactly what I have done actually now that I think about it you know it's uh and it did the voltage you're saying the voltage will skyrocket it did actually it went from 8 volts I added that coil in between the circuit and there and went up to 36 volts there's some coils I could try today here's a, just a regular standard coil uh, on a ferrite rod ferrite uh, here's a special coil. I don't know how I'd even hook it up right now, but this is a, a one I built a few years ago. It's all over the internet. You've probably seen pictures of it. Free energy. <laughs> and here's a Biffler wound one, two wires wrapped around there, like I was showing in the drawing, and I got a loop there. So, all right. Let's continue on and uh, we'll see how it goes. Let the experiments begin. Okay, just let me start real quick by just showing you one more time uh, our best voltage setup. 3663, just, just one circuit, just the two top coils, no ground, okay. Well, let's get on with it. Uh, trying to buff a bifiler round coil right here, right now, just like this setup. These are the results. Dropped about one volt. 
Next. Okay, putting the bifiler in over here. Let's see what happens. And still dropping. Even worse, okay. Okay, still dropping. No good. All right, next let's try the regular wound coil on the ferrite rod on the right side of this coil and then on the left side. Okay, here's what the coil on the right side. It's a regular wound coil. Oh, we're still dropping. That's even worse. Add a bifiler, it was better. We only dropped one volt. Okay, let's try it on the left side. Okay. This small coil on the left side, or well, on our drawing on the left side of the big coils, uh, 34. And we lost a couple volts, so no good. Okay, if you remember from my last few videos, I get the most voltage off of this when I do not have uh, the ground wire here hooked up. Okay, but I just want to show you real quick. I hooked it back up and we went from like 36 volts down to 29.9. So now I'm just going to try real quick to see if either of these two coils in the ground here uh, improve things at all. We'll be right back. Okay. First, the standard coil, 29.3. So, no, it dropped a little bit. All right, let's try the other coil. Okay, that was with the bifiler coil in there. Uh, 30.76. It's fluctuating a little bit. Now, it works better than that coil in all situations, but nothing better yet all right let me think about next thing. okay i just wanted to show this again um where we hook another circuit on there and then i'm going to move my meter probe over here and watch what happens it's quite interesting this is why i got to experiment with the capacitance yet uh, a couple of you guys mentioned that thank you very much Come on, hold the camera. All right, now, clipping this on this side. Bam, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Nine forty five point four point five forty five and a half. There it goes. starting to fall back down. Alright, that's about it. It's over 36. See, we gain a little bit, but not much. Okay, after adding that second circuit on, I did readjust that a little bit. You can see my marker where it was, so I'm about a half an inch higher. And it did make a difference now. So we're over 37 volts now. Let me keep thinking. Okay. 
Let's try a third circuit. Ooh. Dropping. I'll have to check that circuit, make sure it's good. And also we might have to readjust that again. So let me check that out and I'll be right back. Okay, I just uh, swapped the circuit out for another one. I doubt it if they're both bad. We're still dropping massively in voltage here. Uh, yeah, I think we gotta readjust that again. We'll be back. I just realized that I started with that circuit, added that one, added that one. I just realized this second circuit, there's different diodes on it. Out of all my circuits. Those are the ones I normally use. Uh, I'll have to go through all my packages of diodes that I have for this project and see exactly which ones those are. Um, but now, and we're steady. Well, not completely steady. I mean, it's still rising, fluctuating a little bit. But Thirty-eight point six. So, these diodes make a big difference too. And I still have to experiment with the capacitance. That's coming. Just wanted to show you. This is what I got, guys. Uh, capacitance decade boxes, and I have two of them. So that should be perfect for this project. I'll be able to switch capacitance little by little by little and see what works the best. Okay, we just got that one circuit in there with the diodes that were a little different. I know these other ones were 1N34As. I'll still have to find out what these ones are. But yeah, I adjusted the pipe. You can see we're about an inch sticking out now. Say 37.8. So, a little better. Depends on what diodes we use too. I really got to order a bunch of different diodes and experiment with them also. Uh, all right, guys. I think we'll wrap it up for today. And we'll see you again soon. This video might only be 10 or 20 minutes long, but I've been out here for about five hours. <laughs> Hard to believe, but... Till next time, we'll see you again soon.